Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the second installment of major uh, YouTubers who made major mistakes in keeping fish. And uh, today I have a special guest for you from the Pacific Northwest, uh, a gentleman who started off uh, with African cichlids when I first met him and has since uh, diversified and, like so many people, fallen in love with uh, saltwater. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. If this is your first time at the channel, uh, be sure to hit that sub button and, and that bell, and that way you'll get notifications when I upload new information. And if you're like me and you like to always be learning, which is a motto of this channel, always be learning, and uh, we all learn from each other. If, uh, if that sounds like you and the way you feel about fish keeping, definitely hit that bell be notified, and you'll know when I'm gonna go live on Saturday for the cichlids and coffee live. So my guest today from the Pacific Northwest is the Inventory King. His name is Paul. You probably know him as the Inventory King on YouTube. Check out his channel. So Paul, share with us, what was your biggest mistake in keeping fish? Hey, what's up, Ben? So the biggest mistake I made when I was starting out was obviously years ago, and it was when I had my 55 gallon African cichlid tank. That was quite some time ago. So the biggest issue was I over cleaned the tank. So a little backstory, I had the 55 gallon tank, I ended up moving, got the tank established, no problems whatsoever. But one day I decided, hey, let's do a deep clean on this tank. Let's clean the glass, let's clean the filters, let's clean the sand, thinking what's gonna be the big deal? You're just cleaning all the detritus out and algae and all that kind of stuff like that. So got the tank clean, figured it was all good. Then I went out to some friend's house. Lo and behold, I start getting a phone call, hey, you got a major problem with your tank. So that major problem was the fish were dying. They were stressed out like crazy. So I was asking questions on the phone about what was going on. Obviously I left where I was at right away. Now, when I got home, I needed to start assessing the situation. Now that situation was unclear at the moment, but I put two and two together. I overcleaned the tank. Now I live on a well currently, and I was on a well at that time, didn't think anything of it. Well water doesn't have chlorine in it or chloramine, things that would kill beneficial bacteria. So I went about it and I cleaned it, but it was way too much. I did water tests and checked ammonia. I checked nitrite, I checked nitrate. Levels were skyrocketed. And I was doing water change, water change, water change. I mean, we're talking massive, water changes every half hour, every hour. That number was not plummeting. And I had fish dying. I mean, I lost a lot of fish. Obviously frustrating, obviously such a bummer and huge massive mistake. I decided to get a seated sponge filter that I had in my fish room at the time, added it to the tank thinking, I need to get some beneficial bacteria in this tank right away. That is what I did. I added that sponge. I would say within an hour, I noticed a noticeable difference in the tank. The numbers started to go down. The fish started looking a lot better. So lo and behold, the way I look at it, I killed off tons of beneficial bacteria, which was not keeping up with the bio load of those fish and resulted in ammonia spike, nitrite spike, nitrate, all of it just went berserk because I overcleaned. So definitely, Cleaning a tank is obviously gonna be multiple steps. If you're gonna clean your filters one day, just clean your filters, don't do anything else. And then the next week, go ahead and clean your glass, acrylic, whatever it is that you have. Do it in slow steps so that you don't disturb your beneficial bacteria colony, which we know is going to do the nitrogen cycle and allow for your fish to live in a box of water and not be affected by ammonia and nitrite because the bacteria is consuming it and converting it and all that good stuff. So that was my Well, there's probably, if there's probably one mistake that has uh, killed off fish keepers uh, very often before they even had a chance to start, it's probably that one, Paul. You know, you, you, you think you're doing the right thing. You, you, you give that, you give that setup a nice thorough cleaning. You clean the substrate, you, you wash out the filters and, and you feel so proud and everything look, looks so perfect. And, you know, by that evening or the next morning, you know, most, if not all, your fish are dead, uh, usually from uh, ammonia poisoning. So uh, 
I think there's probably nobody watching who, who hasn't been through that at least once, unless they, they had the wisdom to do some research before they got going. Some do. We certainly have things available to us today that were not available back in the day uh, before there was YouTube, and uh, you had to rely on, on advice from, from friends, or other fish keepers, the, the fish store owner. You know, you had to rely on, 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 on picking their brain, and, and sometimes that wasn't always uh, forthcoming. So at any rate, I, I thank you so much uh, for participating, Paul. Um, love the way those, uh, those coral frags look behind you there. And of course, I'm a fan of the hat, being a Laker fan down here in Los Angeles. So at any rate, thank you so much for participating. Uh, be sure to check out uh, Paul's channel, Inventory King, on YouTube. And uh, I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, where I get to answer your questions live. It's a lot of fun and uh, hope to see you then. Thank you.